Your career in engineering is a lifelong journey. And everyone's path is different. When anyone first starts their journey into engineering, they have a vision of where their career is going to go. They're going to go to university, graduate, move into a tier one company, and then slowly move up through the ranks, whether it be at the same company or other companies, but working on big iconic projects. However, this was not the path that I took, but it shaped me into the engineer that I am today. And this is my story. The first consulting firm that I worked for was a small boutique engineering firm. We had about five or six different engineers and a handful of drafters. We mainly dealt with schools, factories and small residential buildings like we have here, which max added about one to two storeys. My first day as an engineer would be highly memorable for all the wrong reasons. So I was keen to get going. So I was setting up my desk and of course, picking up my first coffee for the day. So I started setting up, putting my books up onto the shelf, setting up my desk, getting everything ready. So one of those books came falling down onto the desk, hit one item, hit the keyboard, that sent the coffee cup flying up into the air and spraying the whole wall with a cup of coffee. Not a drop even landed on the desk. Needless to say, I was highly embarrassed. And I spent the next half an hour cleaning up from that mess. However, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. And it's something when I look back, something that I find highly amusing and it became part of the company culture. So everyone thinks about the first day that I started there and the mess that I made. So provided your first day is better than that, you're already doing better than me. So don't forget to pass down onto that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it also allows to get my story out to more people. So I learned quite a lot from my first position. As it was a small company, you really had to be doing everything. It was just not just one person assigned to one task. And because the project was smaller, I got a lot of iterations in, which helped me a lot. You see, it's much like the fable of the pottery class. See, what happened in the pottery class, a group of students were split up into two groups. In one group, they were assigned to make one pot over 30 days. And in the second group, they were assigned to have 30 pots over 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, they would come back and judge which group had the better pots. And when they came back and did the judging, they found that the group that made 30 pots over 30 days were all in the top 10. So they all produced the best pots. Now, what did they learn from this? Well, they learned that through iterations and practicing their skills over and over again, they were able to refine their designs and work on the mistakes that they're having in the past. Where the other group, they didn't learn from those mistakes, even though they spent more time on the single project, they weren't as good. So this is similar to the concepts of when you're starting out as well. You want to try and get a lot of iterations in to try and cut your teeth as an engineer. It will help you improve quicker. Yes, it is good to work on those key projects. However, the smaller projects are just the same as a bigger project. However, you're still going down the same path of design as you need to have that same low path. You need to look at where you're putting the beams. You need to look at how you're going to stabilize the building, which is all similar concepts that you need to have on a large building. However, as you have a lot of iterations, you get more a broad range of experiences of different situations and ways to solve them. Also at a small company, you need to be really that jack of all trades. So you're dealing with clients more, you're dealing with finances. So you get to work at how to do fee proposals and variations early on as well. And that's something else that I got from this company. And the other one as well is a lot of the projects I had at the end of the day, they were winning a lot of architectural awards. And those awards clearly came when you had the symbiosis between the architect. The engineer went and talked to the architect, worked out what the problems that they were having and how we could solve them. So no good design is not just a design from the architect. It also needs the engineer involved. So you need to be part of the solution. After about seven or eight years of working at this small boutique engineering firm, I started to become stale and I was not really learning anything from there. And this is when I decided to actually move on and progress my career. And when I first started looking, it was really quite hard to find that next step up in career. As a lot of the tier ones are just looking at saying you've got this small boutique engineering firm career, really looking at someone that has these different skill set. But I actually needed help from someone. I needed to get a recruiter to help me get my foot in the door. This is where I started at a company called Hyder at the time, which is now known as Cadis. And this gave me a new broad range of experiences. You see, at Hyder, I learned the power of BIM. I got some good mentors about how to put buildings together and the modeling side, so learning how to do Revit. And after a couple of years, I worked on a project called Casey Central. See, I first started off doing the project from the start, so I was doing the scheme, 
was doing the concept all the way through tender into construction. I actually got the opportunity to do construction site services on the project. So I was based on site the full time, so being a site engineer. And this is the next stage where I actually learned quite a lot, the benefits of having some site experience. You see, buildings don't always go together as easy as you'll think. And when you put down on paper, it may seem like an easy concept, quite easy to think, okay, yeah, that's how they're going to put it together. But how are they going to actually construct it? See, sites are not actually factories. They have problems, they have issues with existing services, different locations, or just trying to get stuff to site. And also sometimes it may be slightly easy to do something a certain way. Say, for example, if you're doing a steel frame structure, it's actually easier, especially in the first phase, is not to use rod cross bracing. You see, the problem with rod cross bracing, especially in that first phase, is that you can overstress it. So you still need temporary support structures in there for a long time. And having discussions with the contractors was it invaluable. So I talked to the steel fabricator, I talked to the steel erector, I talked to the precaster, I talked to the concreter all gave me their advice and valuable insight about the issues that they've had on site, the issues that they're having with my design so I can modify them to be a better engineer in the long run. And also being on site every day as opposed to just every now and then really gave me insight into the issues that they're having. It really helped with the way I design and how I think about how it goes together. It's not just getting something on the page that works structurally. You also need to make sure that it is buildable and the easier you can make it for them to build, the better the construction will be. As it doesn't matter how good your engineering design is, if it can't be built, it's going to have to be modified. So this is something that I took to heart, especially after you've had a couple of years experience gone through some design work, I would recommend you volunteering and getting some of that exciting experience. It'll make you a better engineer and you'll realize that things aren't necessarily as clean cut as they will be on paper. It's not someone else's problem that they need to put the building together. They need to consider how it's going to be constructed. So what fabrication and erection problems are they going to have? And how can you try and solve them before they even get to site? I was able to get my next position relatively easily. You see, engineering is quite a small community, especially structural engineering. So whenever you're progressing your career, you don't want to burn the bridges behind you because you don't know who you're burning and when you may need their help to get that next position. So when I was applying for that next position, they just asked around some of the colleagues that they knew as personal friends about what they thought about my engineering. So I started working in the Melbourne office. However, it wasn't long before I got the opportunity to move up to Brisbane to work on a major project up there. I worked on a major project called Queen's Wharf, where I was a lead engineer for several of the towers and the sky deck. And this opened up my eyes to a number of things. See, WSP at the time had been able to win the whole project. So we had services, mechanical, electrical, water, structural engineering, as we needed to work closely with our services team. It got me to learn some of the problems that they may have to service the building. So where they need penetrations. So this has given me more of an overall broad experience of the type of things that I needed to consider in a whole building design. And they've really opened up the eyes to what engineering has to offer if you're willing to grab it. You see, I've traveled all around Australia. I've gone all the way up and down the East Coast. I've designed buildings in Perth, Adelaide, Darwin. So engineering is really one of those careers. If you get in the right position, you try hard enough, you may better travel all around the world. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. I'd just like to give a shout out to one of my nearest Patreons, Ramshia War Pasada. Sorry if I butchered that name. And the many other Patreons that I've got listed off to the side here. These type of episodes would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.